Good morning to you on this Monday. Woohoo! Another week again. Um, started. We. I'm so so excited about today's make because this is kind of one of my pet projects. I love coraline, and I have made. Let me just get my hair out of the way. I have made this in quite a few different variations. This one so far. Well. I have done it with crystals, done it with pearls, done it with all sorts of different things, but it looks the most organic when you use it with gemstone chips. So that's what we did today. And you know me, I couldn't just have one variation. <laughs> I had to have them all. So I got nine scrumptious, beautiful um, colorways for you. So let me know how we're doing today. Let me know when you're watching from if you're new, just come and say hello. And we love to welcome you, our little uh, beading family here. If you've got any question, put a cue in front of your question so I can very easily identify it and make sure I answer it for you. If you got a tip, and then please let please um, put a T in front of your tip. So that, again, we very quickly can identify it and um, I can really add for you. So um, how are we doing? How's, has everybody had a good weekend? I had a very, very busy weekend. We had an open day and then yesterday we went out with the family. But um, I'm going to actually dive in because I've got so much to show you today that um, I really want to talk you through the technique and all the different color variations and bits and pieces you can do. So very quickly, just going to come and say hello. Morning, Gwen, Leanne, Jan, Jitty, Paula, Joe. Morning, Sue, Lucy, Camille. Oh, there's so many of you lovers are here. Are Pamela, I'm just reaching for my coffee. Simon just bought me in a coffee. Thank you, Simon. I really needed it. Morning, Lisa. Morning, Camille. And Oh, hot and sunny in Buckinghamshire. I think it's quite hot and sunny outside here as well. I've got so much to do today. I would love to like go down to the beach and just have a day at the beach, but I've got so much to do on today. I need to do instructions. I need to do all sorts of different bits and pieces for the bead club and make up another sample and you know how it goes. Never stops. And crafty work is never stopped. Good morning, Judith, Betham, Helen, Janet. Rachel, Annie, Lorna, Claire, Brenda, oh, Brenda is here, Francis. So Brenda, thank you so much for helping us to make up some of these samples. She is my little super beater superstar. Um, really, I, I really couldn't do these shows without her. And I'm going to turn you down and show you all these lovely samples. But, um, you know, I, otherwise I would have to give up sleep. <laughs> I'm already going to bed quite late. I caught the sun, yes. Yesterday I caught the sun. I like to caught the sun more on my back here. But um, it's not sore, so it's fine. Right, okay. So shall we go down and i show you all the different uh, samples I have. There we go. I'm just pop these out a little bit. And I'm going to zoom in just a tiny bit. So the one I have on, and I'm just going to take it off and I'm going to show it to you. This is the pink opal. And I love, love, love this colorway. Very, very summery. Um, it has the pink opal chips. So we name them by the names of the chips. Really beautiful. I love the, the little bit of rose goldy color. The rose color you get with... We divide in the chips as well. And the two different seed beads I've chosen for this one. One of them is more of like a salmon pink. And the other one is more like a really nice light pink. So each one of the kits, you are going to be getting a size 8 FGB seed beads. And two size 11. No, 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 sorry, not size 11. I had to pull Simon up size 12 FGB seed bead on there as well. So there is 50 grams of each one of those seed beads. So you will be able to make four necklaces. Now you can add the chips all the way along, but I will take you through that as well. Or you can make it shorter, you can make it bigger. If I show you the next one, which is the aquamarine, this one is a little bit longer. Again, it's your design. So you can you see like I made those little fringelets a little bit longer, but I just love, I really do love how and but they are a bit more spaced out but i'll go i'll go we'll go through just in a snack that's an aquamarine that's the one i made first then here is the amazonite another one of my favorites you know me i love aquamarine amazonite anything turquoisey um 
these are just beautiful again and the two the two different colors of seed beads you get in a size 12 so i've given you a lighter color and a darker color so you can either have the darker color as your base and add the lighter color in as a filler or have your lighter color as a base and a darker color as your filler and you can see like on this one there isn't no top sort of little little fringes at the top little twig that's at the top it's all at the bottom as well so again you could do all sorts of different um techniques with that one now this one this one is absolutely gorgeous this is the white shell one and i think that's just so fitting for seaside that's so fitting for the the necklace itself and i added this really beautiful gold size 12s <laughs> i keep wanting to say size 11 but this size 12s and this beautiful i think they're like a, a lemony chiffony but they, they they like really the same color as that shell itself let me just bring it up to you so you can see closer beautiful again they are beautiful these beads i really do love them it's going to zoom in a tiny bit more so you can see it closer that's it they they sit beautifully and the chips just make it so so organic Oh, I need to sing hi from Johannesburg, South Africa. So glad I caught you live. Oh, hi, Anita. Um, we go live Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10 a.m. UK time. What time is that South Africa? Is South Africa an hour ahead of us? Maybe. Or is it the same time? So it's 10.07 10 here. Let us know what time is in South Africa at the moment. I think you're one hour ahead of us or behind. I don't know. <laughs> right, this one. I love, love, love this one again you get two so some some of the colors are try to kind of match the chips and some like this one i added you a lighter color than the chips and a darker color than the chips so the chips is your kind of like your middle middle color in your necklace and i really do love um I really loved up this color as well. Usually I wouldn't go for reds, but because this one's got like a little bit of pinks and oranges as well, again, a perfect, perfect summer color to, to wear with our little, let me just move this in. It just looks like I, I, I seen the head, top of my head there. <laughs> um, I had to move the camera because I obviously took it in on Saturday for the open day. And I, it's still not quite straight, but I'll sort that out later. So yeah, I love, I really do love this colorway as well. With the, This is the Carnelian Red Agate version. And because the Red Agate, again, it has got all sorts of different, so it's got orange, it's got a little bit of a brown, a bit pink, a little bit of white. It's, it will go with loads of different tops. It will go with loads of different dresses. Right, next one. Oh, the picture, Jasper. I love this one as well. So this is, I usually, you know me, I go for blues and like turquoises teals and i go all sorts of like you know maybe pinks and purples but i really go for a lot of earthy colors but i do love working with earthy colors and this one the picture jasper as well with this bronze seed beads and this really nice base like butter milky base seed bead just go together so so perfectly that and i'll, I'll show you if you just get to it in a minute i will show you the technique is really really easy and the chips are beautiful because all those colors and let me just bring it up all those colors are coming through um on the chips and the seed bead just make it look like um even better right next one is is the moonstone one now we only got a little snippets of this one just to show you how they look like again i added like a little bit of a salmon -y color but this one is a different salmon -y color than the one we had in the pink one because this is more of a pinky salmon -y color and this is more like a <laughs> I don't know, I'm not really <laughs> explaining the colors very well this morning, but this is more of like a, a um, like an antique, antique color, I guess, on that one, the moonstone. So that's, I love, I love, love, love that, that colorway as well with the moonstone. I think I definitely going to make a necklace because I have got a couple of dresses, that sort of color, which will go perfectly. Right. Next one is, this is the Howlite and I, white Howlite. I love this one as well because I do have a lot of, and the seed beads with it, it's not quite um, white. They're more like a little bit, they got like a hint of gray in them. So I tried it to match those little veins in the gemstone chips themselves. And they're really, 
I'll, I have got a lot of white tops so I'm definitely gonna make up a larger section of this one for myself and last but not least is our beautiful black related cords now this one i went a little because again if you put these two next to each other this one is more like a lighter version this is more like a darker version of a monochrome because here we got whites and grays and here we got sort of grays and blacks but again i tried to pick a lighter color for your necklace and then silvers and black seed beads to go with this one so overall that looks like just a little bit darker but because we added this lighter silver color in there you can wear it with whites you can wear it with silvers grays blacks all sorts of different colors you would like to but whatever you got in your wardrobe you will go with it right i'm very quickly gonna pop to the website to show you this in there just share my skin there we go so by now you know the drill you need to go to totallybeads.co.uk let me just go back to the main page and you're going to click on video tutorials i'm going to click on this one on the left hand side this morning and go down you know we got hundreds and hundreds of tutorials there are over 300 of them i think but i haven't counted up i'm going to go in today's which is coraling now the, all different what colors everything is there i'm going to go into the aquamarine and just to sh just to point you out again you get two times size 12 fgb seed beads they both 50 grams each you get one times size 8 fgb seed beads it is that's 50 gram as well so you got loads there and i added four toggle clasp in there because you will be able to make four necklaces i mean you don't have to do the coraling that wide um as i did it on that one so if you do want to make more than one necklace um or two or three or how many ever got in your mind then split your materials before you start so i added the needle and thread separately because you might have needle and thread at home already so you don't need that one um, but simon graciously given us 10 percent off of the kits so to make for necklaces 1539 uh, is is quite good and the way how the price is calculated some of them a little bit more some of them a little bit less it's depending how much is the raw materials cost so i think the cheapest one is 10 pound 35 which is the high the white howlite and i think that was the most expensive one what i showed you the aquamarine but it ranges in between but 11 12 pound for uh for necklaces that's really good right let's come back down to our table and let's get started so remember if you've got any question please put a Q in front of your question and if you've got a tip then please put a T in front of your question so I can very easily identify it. So I'm just going to pour some of these sizes then I've already done one necklace with this one so there is loads there, there is loads like 50 gram is a lot of lot of lot of beads. I'm going to just grab my thread and i'm gonna grab a needle and thread my needle oh do you think they are beautiful morning natalie she let's say good morning everyone bonjour from a very sunny france susan bonjour susan i i, I keep joking because i i like I, I was wearing my fringe out of my face and a couple of days ago i thought like i always do this i always like go and this time I, it was self-inflicted because I cut the fringe from myself on the lockdown like just wanted a bit of a change messed around with it but throughout my life I probably had fringe cut probably at three or four times and every single time when I had the fringe cut like 10 minutes later <laughs> <laughs> literally 10 minutes later I was like I don't like it and I'm just spinning it back and I'm growing it out already so this time I said to myself that actually I'm gonna wear the fringe for a next month or two just just to see just to get used to it and and see how see how i go with it and um simon keeps calling me the french girl <laughs> i don't know do people wear like a lot of fringes in in france i think they do but um yeah so a little bit of side tension there right i'm just adding my pulling my needle down so i do have probably i don't know um about four feet of like a couple of arm span of thread here doubled over i'm gonna grab my clasp actually i think 
that's the wrong color. I need this lovely antique silver one. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab, I need just a few size 11s as well to start with. So I'm going to just put a few there just for a sec. So what we're going to do, we're going to pick up three seed beads. And then we're going to go through the clasp. We're going to pick up another three seed beads. I mean, if you wanted to, you don't don't have to, like, you know, you can you can have the knot right inside there. It's really it's up to you. I just like to have three seed beads. So you could you could just have the thread coming straight out of the size eight. Sometimes I just like to add like a, a few seed beads at the top just to make it um, so that they, they just hug the clasp itself right so from here i'm gonna go straight in i'm gonna pick up my size eight seed beads now you want this necklace a little bit longer you don't want um your most well the, depending on what, what size necklace you wear usually it's like 16 inch some people like 18 inch so this one definitely you want about like 20 um 22 inch because don't forget we're doing this for the summer and we want them to sit a little bit further down so you don't want it to sit on the top of your neck and if especially if you're wearing it with dresses dresses you want this really nice and airy so I, I do like to make this a little bit longer but do experiment like you know what size is the best um for you morning ruth i uh, bethany saying fringe look nice oh thank you I'm just going to pick up, I'm probably not going to do a whole length of necklace here. So I'm just going to, so I got a little sample I can show you, but I'm just going to go ahead and pick up very quickly. So I've got all the beads on the mat and I'm just stabbing my needle at them. And the material I have underneath it, this is just like a white felty material. So it's... It just stops the beads rolling around. There's bead mats as well and bead trays you could use. There's all sorts of different materials like a felty material would do as well. This one is more like a fleece actually, not like a felt actually. They they can be quite cheap in um in the fabric shop, maybe about five pound a meter and that will do you for a long time. Right, let's see how long have you got. So I have got probably about six inches. So I'm going to keep on going, just add a little bit more to this one. And there we go. So make sure. I mean, you could do it smaller if you wanted to. You could do it the size you wanted to, but um, I should have strung these on before I started the live actually for you, but never mind. Good morning, Seema. Good morning, D. Good morning, Debbie, Elaine. Elaine is saying, sorry, I'm late. Oh, Elaine, don't worry. We just started. We're doing these gorgeous necklaces. Like coraling necklaces. I really love this technique. What I love about coraling the most, I guess, because it's so organic. Like, it doesn't matter if you add one more bead on or you take a bead away. It's really, really organic. And you can use, like, you can use all sorts of different quality of beads on this one. Now, you could make it with, like, a craft seed beads, which are really, really uneven. If you are using craft seed beads, then I wouldn't can the beads. In that case, I would just measure it with a ruler, like, to get each fringe exactly the same size. Tohos, you could do it with tohos or, or really high quality ones as well. In that case, I would definitely can the beads. FGB is your middle class seed beads, and that's what we're using here. And because they're size 12, they're just a tiny bit smaller than size 11. So they just they just look a little bit more, I guess, organic to me. And I, I really do love FGBs. They're not, they're so, some of them are really great for bead stitching as well, like POT stitch. But a technique like this or making flowers, they are just perfect because they are more even than just the craft seed beads. Like, hence, that's a Sarah actually and named them craft seed beads, um, middle class instead of 
calling them crafty beads, middle class beads. Because that's that's what they are. For the same price, you get like 50 gram what you would get in 10 gram of Toho. So they go a lot, lot further. Um, Susan is saying tip, I guess you could use a bead spinner for this bit. Yeah, absolutely you could. That's actually a very good thinking, Susan. I should have thought that earlier. But because we're picking up size 8 seed beads very quickly, we're gonna, and I think I've got more than enough now, I think. Oh yeah, absolutely. i got quite nice length there. So when you get to the other side, you're just going to pick up three seed beads and you're going to go through the T-bar from your on your toggle. And believe me, I did it before. I added a T-bar on or I added a, a ring part on both sides. And I'm just going to pull this down. Oh, come on. It's been your thread. You've been so good all the way up until now. And now you're going to give me a little knot. Right. Let's get you sorted. There we go. So I picked up three seed beads. I'm going to pick up another three little seed bead. And this time I like to wrap this around my middle finger here so I can very quickly go back on this. So I'm just going to push the three seed beads, the three little seed beads to one side and just take my thread to all of the size eight seed beads until I get to the other side. Now, if you have got a longer needle, this comes in really handy. Just make sure our thread is not caught by the clasp. It's really handy here because you can push it through quite a few of the seed beads as you go along. And there we go and I'm just letting more down and going through these as well and when we get to the other side we're just going to knot our beginning and end together to form a nice and strong base. If I have got thread left I will run up and down a couple more times later on just to strengthen it because like I can imagine like wearing these sort of necklaces to the beach and wearing it out. So you want the necklace part of it just a tiny bit stronger, a bit more resistant to little, little hands as well. Christopher always used to pull my necklaces. Lucy Singh, I did this project before and really enjoy it. Must have a go with the gemstone chips. Now it looks more special. Yeah, you could use all sorts of different things. Crystals, pearls, anything you have really. It's just, I love the gemstone chips because they give you the even more natural look. And gemstone chips, in my opinion, are so underused. And like, you know, gemstones can be like round and faceted gemstones can be so, so expensive. And gemstone chips is kind of like a cheaper way of keep using gemstones but they are so underused and techniques like this are just perfect like really perfect because they look so so natural with it right i'm almost down to the end a holiday necklace absolutely absolutely you could do all sorts of different things once you get into it but i'm gonna show you the little fringes just in a minute how uh, to do them and and it's just really easy I, I love just sitting there and and doing I love this technique I love anything where you don't have to sort of pay too much attention you can just relax and just enjoy the make as you're making it And this is one of them because if I miss a bead, it doesn't really matter. It's still going to hang down nicely. If I pick up an extra one, it's okay as well. Which colorway are you doing? So this is the Amazonite. I, I wanted to say aquamarine, but it's not. It's Amazonite. This is the Amazonite, which is slightly a bit more tealy color. But this is me. That's I need a sip of my coffee, I guess. Camille is going to remind me just in a sec. Alison is saying, good morning from a magnificent winter morning. Super delighted to catch you live. What a wonderful way to start my week. I have missed total beads. Love your demos. Oh, bless you, Alison. Right, I'm going to go through only the size 8 here at the end. And then actually... I will 
bring all of these down i'm going to make sure i got the three seed beads on the other side just like that and i'm going to knot i'm going to make sure this is a little bit tighter not too tight but nice and tight so i don't have any gaps and i'm just going to knot my end my tail and my working thread together just like that to form a knot there we go and now what i would do I'm not going to do it right now because um, <laughs> I want to show you how to do the fringing. I usually run all the way down. I run all the way down and up and around and come back again just to strengthen this part of the necklace a little bit. Just move this over. That's it. That's all we need. To strengthen that part of the necklace just a bit. Right that way I want to go. That's it. So once you have done your necklace, and on this one I have already started, already started, let me just get my tail ends out of the way. The only thing you have to look at with this necklace is that you keep your threads away from each other. Because otherwise they can and I just got it caught on those chips. They can knot up. There we go. Right, just to start at the fringes. I bet there were some little fingers involved in this one. Somebody must have come in. Hold on, let me just, that's the, that's the one which we don't need. Christopher often comes in here and just picks things up. And just looks at them, bless him. Right, let's just sort this out quickly. Right, so once you have got your necklace, we're going to take a separate piece of thread. And I'm going to show you how to add the thread. I like to start right in the middle. I'm going to pull this back through. I like to start right in the middle because then that gives me the opportunity to work either way. Oh, come on, thread. You're going to show me up. There we go. That's that way. There we go. That's... By the way, I don't know what they're doing outside, but I think they must be digging the road, so I hope you can't hear it. So then, there we go, and it's all done. So I would start right in the middle, and I would take probably to four arm four arm spam of thread so i would add the thread in the middle i would add needle to one side and then start my curling that way and then add needle to the other side and continue my curling the other way but i love to so sort of start in the middle and if you start in the middle you could do so much different things you could if you wanted to and you want to take your curling to the next level you could even taper it which meaning you will be doing maybe longer lengths in the middle and shorten them as you go along i'm just going to zoom in a little bit more because we're going to do this fringe it now and i really want you to see it let me just zoom in with this one as well there we go Leave it a little bit. so we are going to be doing these what well, each one of these little fringes so to add the thread on right in the middle i'm just gonna grab a piece of thread and this is what I said you need form arm spam of it. Now I'm not gonna have I'm not gonna cut four arm spam, I'm just gonna cut a little one to show you because we will need to take that off. But all you're gonna do, you're gonna fold your thread in half, just like that. You're gonna go under your necklace, you're gonna find where is your middle seed bead, pull the thread in there. Then on one side, you're going to have a loop and on the other side, you're going to have your ends. So all you're going to do is to pull your ends through your loop. Hold on. Because I cut it so short, I don't want to pull it out too much. There we go. 
and you're going to pull the ends through and when I pull this through if I pull it really tight can you see I'm going to have a little knot forming on the top there and then I will take one end going one way the other end going the other way that's that's what I did here so partial leave it I already one side of it I already used going that way and I'm going to go the other way now just find the end and add a needle onto it now of course you can use shorter length of threads if you like and you can add thread on later on as well so when you need a straight pair of needle needle I found one right, so I'm very quickly gonna thread this Although the seed beads are size 12, I'm still using a size 10 needle here. Morning, Victoria. Oh, Mina is here. Morning, Mina. But my daughter did some and asked me to make some catchers for her. Oh, I think my, my, most of you sort of talking to each other, but I love you have like a lot of coffee yeah, Camille. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Susan is saying, I want to have to show this to you. The necklace is beautiful. Your videos are always inspirational. Thank you so much. That's really. Thank you for your kind words. Right. Right, let's trim the end. This is not my very good scissors. I keep mixing my little scissors up. I got one which I use with glue and all sorts of things. And the other one is just for cutting the thread. But I should put, maybe I should do a little charm on the handle so I can easily identify it. Right, so as I'm coming out of this bit here, I'm just going to go along one. So I'm just going to go through one size 8 seed bead. And I'm progressing to the right here, but I only want to go through one. Then I'm going to pick up one size 8. So I have got like a little size 8 sitting underneath it. Just bring some of those in and some seed beads as well. going to need a few more now what I love doing absolutely love 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 doing is to mix the two colors together so when I say mix I wouldn't like do a bead soup but you could do and that's actually good quite look good that would look good as well so if any of you will do it from a bead soup do please send me a picture because I love to see it but what I love doing so each one of those fringes is going to have your main spine which is I use the lighter color here because these beads are quite even i will count them so i will count 15 beads but if you're using lower quality seed beads which you can and they will still look perfect those uneven ones then measure it as you pick your seed beads up take it all the way down and measure it and each time do like two centimeters worth or one and a half or three or how long ever you want to do your fringes so i'm going to pick up one size eight i'm going to pick up 15 of my lighter color but equally I could do I could start with a darker color if I wanted to nine ten one two three four five so I've got fifteen I'm gonna take this all the way down. So that's my main main body of my fringe here. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up, just move these. I'm going to pick up one stone chip. Just get one from my tray here. Now if you want, you could grade your stone chip and put like the bigger ones at the bottom or use different colors. I kind of just like to pick them by chance. So I just pick up one stone chip and I'm going to pick up one the very same color of size 12 take these all the way down as well and then i'm going to come back on myself but i'm going to miss the seed bead right at the end i'm going to come back 
through the gemstone chip and I'm going to come back through five of my seed beads here just like that and pull this up now you must make sure when you're pulling this up you're pulling it nice and tight so you don't want gaps just like that because then the whole of the fringe is going to sag down with gravity it's going to pull the beads down when you're weaving it and and your thread is going to be exposed at the top so you definitely don't want that one so make sure if this is happens just pick on your little and just pull this up just pick on your little seed beads at the bottom and pull it back then I just kind of like to hold on to that seed bead and then pull it in nice and tight so I went up five seed beads and then I'm gonna go ahead and pick up another five seed bead and another stone chips and another seed bead take these down as well now again we're gonna ignore the last seed bead we're gonna go to the gemstone chip and we're gonna go to the five seed beads we just added and five more seed beads from the main body of our fringe going upwards and again pull this nice and tight now I'm gonna add a different color here so I'm gonna add my darker color I'm gonna pick up five of my darker color I'm going to pick up another stone chip and another darker color. Now what you could do, you could just add stone chips at the bottom and use some of your size 8 seed beads instead of the stone chips further up as well. Entirely it's up to you. Now I'm going to again ignore the last seed bead come through the chip, the 5 seed bead I just added. And then all the way to the top and I'm going to stop just in front of the size 8 and I'm going to add another fringe in there so picking up five seed beads I'm going to pick up a chip and another five seed beads take this all the way down and I'm going to miss that seed bead go through the chip and the five seed beads up to size eight so I'm right to the top of my fringe and with that I finished my little fringe here what length of thread are you using for your fringes Victor Singh as long as you can <laughs> because it's going to take a lot of thread to do them so um, I do like a couple of arm spam at least Now, when you get to the top, locate where you're coming out from. So we're coming out between these two seed beads. So we're going to jump over this seed bead here and just go through the next one. If you wanted to have more than one seed bead gap between your fringes, then go through two. So if I show you the aquamarine, is right here I'm just getting caught up in my <laughs> threads there we go I'm just put it out to see if I show the aquamarine this one has got two beads in between as a gap so it's really your own design and if I show you this other um, Amazonite this one what Brenda made she didn't add a top row of fringes so she didn't stop right underneath the size 8 she just went straight and went into the next one so again it's giving you a different look because you got like a skinnier look at the top and a nice and bushy look at the bottom so you could do so much different things with it. let me just add put the two next to each other so you can see exactly the difference just put that there and I'm going to put this where we have got the top bits right next door to it so there's a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of threads coming and going, but I think you can see, let me just move this over a little bit. I think you can see, oops, there we go. You can see very well. So you can have more of a bushy look and we just got the tail end caught up. I'm just going to pull this back. You can have more of a bushy look that way or 
I just got so many threads on here. Come on, come on, thread. Let's untangle you, or you can have more of a simple look. It's up to you. And it depends on like what you prefer as well. And that's it, let's thread out of the way. Depends what you prefer as well. Some people will prefer more of like a skinnier look. Some people will more like a, a bushier look. So really just play with it. Just You can just really, really play with it. So this is the Amazonite colorway. I really do love this one. With the t it's like a tealy color. So it, it goes, but I made sure every single colorway, oh, Camille is saying coffee. Thank you, Camille. Um, every single time, with every single colorway I did, I made sure I added like this shell look. It's like a pearl, pearly finished seed beads. And actually, when you look at them from far away, they kind of look like pearl beads. They don't look like seed beads. So I think they do look really beautiful. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments if you have tried this technique before. Let me know if like, you know, how you get go on with it, if you like it or this is the first time you've seen it. Let me know if you are going to try it. There is so many different like variations you could do. Right. Going back to our fringe. I'm going to do a couple more fringes on this side for you because I want to talk to you about blending the colors. So I'm going to make sure we are not twisted with our got so <laughs> much thread ends on here. So I love adding just a little bit of color into it. So my color A or color B or color one and color two, however <laughs> you want to identify them is I could have used the darker color as my main color here and just add the light one in as a little fleck of color here and there or like you know really it's up to you so on my next fringe so here I added one a kind of like symmetry so even when I'm doing something like this which is really crazy because we're doing curling and we, we're trying to go for a a organic look but I do like symmetry so I would add one darker color fringe on fringe let on one fringe and then on the next one I'm just gonna pull this the one before I will add two just to balance the colors out so that darker color is consistent all the way through the necklaces so again, as I'm here and we're gonna add another fringe I'm gonna pick up one size eight then 15 of the size 12s um, Helen is asking could you do this with three rondel crystal beads you, yeah you could do with crystal beads you could do all sorts of different beads this you know you whatever you want to add on the different but Helen you are in the bead club so in start of August that's when it's planned in we are going to be doing coralling we're going to be doing a bit more like, a, a, it will be a bit more of a make because in a bead club we have time, we are there for a couple of hours. So we're going to do a more of a stitch base and then in the bead club I will talk you through all different lengths and all sorts of different um, variations, what you could do. So do keep an eye out for that. And if you're not in a bead club, then do check the bead club out. We do have it on Thursday night and Friday lunchtime. Just a lovely bunch of ladies getting together every single week and we do we do a class a week so last week actually it was Sarah's class and she was doing a mobiased flower bracelet with gemstones right I'm picking up darker color this time first and then I'm going to pick up another chip and another darker color. So the darker color was in the middle and here I want it at the bottom. And I'm going back up. It's quite time consuming, I guess, to do like all the fringes, but it depends how much you want to add onto it because you could make it smaller. I kind of like to do like uneven amounts. So even if you count in inches or if you count in centimeters, I would want to do like three, five, seven inches or, I don't know, seven, nine, eleven, etc. centimeters. 
Now, because I did a dark one at the bottom, I'm going to add a lighter one next. And I'm just picking up five seed beads. Another gemstone chips, another seed bead. And taking it all the way down. It is similar to the uh, um, metal bracelet, but it's different because... The, we, we, we're trying to group things together so when, when we do something like we li like to give you different end results I guess so you'll really learn the technique with the metal bracelet you would just do one little loops and with this one you're taking it further because you're doing fringes so you, you're if you think about it like a tree like this one has got branches and then it's got twigs at the end as well Fringes and fringelets and all sorts of different things. But I love, I do absolutely love this look for the summer. Just so, so, so organic looking. That's, that's, I think, the best word to it. Right, I'm adding my last fringelet here. And again, it's, this is going to be a darker color. And take this all the way down. And then I'm going to come back through and I'm going to go through that and straight up the size 8. Now if you had it 4 seed beads or we have added six, bead, 6 seed beads, it doesn't really matter because it's all going to look nice and organic. Now I'm going to jump over this seed bead and I'm going to go through the next. And that's it. And that's all you do all the way along. Adding the fringelets. Now if you don't want it to do it to like 15 beads worth you could do 10 beads and just add a couple of fringes at the bottom if you want it to do longer then do 20 or 25 if you don't want to go with fives then go with fours like you could do 12 and then your fringelets would be like four seed beads worth it's really it's up to you what you like you know how, how big you want to make it i i really do love it and i think as i said gemstone chips are so underused this is a really nice technique to use them and loads, loads of you will have some at home. Oh, Lucy just popped the big uh, the link up for the beat clubs. Do check that one out as well. It will be the first weekend in August when we deep dive more into the coraling as well there because there is the, there is so many different techniques to it. So this is just scratching the bare surface here. But there is like you could do loops, you could do like so loads, loads of different things. And she's saying beat club is fab you should join <laughs> bless yes you should sounds pretty family saying i will have a go would like tourmaline gems yeah you could do any any uh, any gemstone chips what you like um and it is saying i've got some tiger eye chips but color seed beads would work with it well, it's depending on what color your tiger is if it's more brown or if it's more yellowish color, um, match it. But what, 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 if you working with what you got in your stash, then just look through and see what looks nice with it. But don't forget, you could just make a little bit up. And if you don't like it, you can always cut it down. What we do do when we do the kits, like I, I sit there and I'm going to actually zoom out and show you some of these colorways again. I sit there and I go through. I go through the colorways and I probably takes me about a couple of hours to choose the colors, but then the colors will go together perfectly. I will make sure that, and it's, it comes with experience, like yeah, years and years of color picking, I guess, and, and looking at things, how they, they go together. So, um, with tiger eye, I don't know. I think probably it would look something bronzy or browny, and maybe another one, which is a little bit more yellowy. Just have to have to experiment. Really have to experiment. Let's just zoom out a little bit. So this this is like I'm gonna move this to the side because this is the one which has got all the threads. <laughs> I don't want to, don't want them to tangle up. There's nothing worse than a tangled up thread. And let's have a look at the finished sample. There we go. So it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. And again, I have to say thank you for Brenda to helping out and making these samples because otherwise I would not be able to show them off to your I would have had to beat all night and I, and believe me yesterday as we were driving up and then we were driving back down from Skegness I was beating on the way up and I was beating on the way down I was doing Wednesday samples for 
our lovely summer wine um, earrings. Just push this out of the way. So yeah, so this is the Amazonite. I love the shell version. I love all of them actually. I'm making a big mess up here with all of them. I love the carnelian version as well. This is the picture Jasper. I'm just pop them. Will they fit like that? This is the pink one, the pink opal, what I was wearing earlier. Put that to the side there. Then we got the aquamarine. This one is a little bit longer. And then the little ones. I love the white highlight. I've got so much white tops. Oops. Get rid of those seed beads. I sort them out later. And then it's the black related quartz. And what are we missing? Oh, this one. The lovely moonstone one. Um, good morning, guys. Who is saying, oh, is late today? Has been having a nightmare trying to reapply for my dad's blue badge. Oh, bless you. I hope you get it sorted, lovely. Um, can we think I have a go at this one? Looks very pretty. Yeah, do have a go and do send me pictures and pop it into the groups because I love to see what you are making. I'm um, so saying that it's so pretty and delicate. I love the sea foam colors. I, I, I love them all. I love the show version as well. And I haven't really got like lemony or goldy tops, but <laughs> this is, you know, when it happens, I'm thinking them I have to go well. And I have to get a top to match a necklace. It's not like we're matching the necklaces to our tops. Like, you know, this is when you find the perfect looking beads and you go out and find the top to go with your necklace. We look nice as earrings. Yeah, you could do as earrings as well. You could bunch them up. Maybe bronze color seed beads with tiger eye chips. Yeah, bronze, bronze or browns or amber colors. Like that one in your hand. I had all of mine in my hand. Oh, that's lovely. Gorgeous. All the colors so nice. It's so hard to choose. Yeah. Oh, if you like, I, I had to really stop myself at nine because I could have kept going. <laughs> I had about 15 different chips on the tray, um, on the trolley. And when I was choosing the seed beads and I physically had to stop myself and say like, no, nine, that's it. I can't, I can't go anymore. Because uh, <laughs> Simon's going to tell me, he always tells him. But that's what I love. I love playing with colors. Oh, so missing. That would give me a headache. Anything sitting in a car. And I actually, like, I can't. It's, it's really strange. I can't read in the car at all. So, but I can do beading. I don't know why. But if I read or if I look at my phone, I get car sick. But if I do beading... I don't. I think it's because with beading, you are looking up all the time. And with reading, like you're sitting there, like your eyes fixed on it. Oh, Bridget Singer. Oh, hello, Bridget. She said, I enjoyed this so much, I forgot to say hello. She's saying, oh, gorgeous, so hard to choose my favorite. Love them all. See from earlier. So that's the tealy color. It's um, it's more like a tealy color. Yeah, I guess like it's a sea for me tealy color. Out of the collection, we'll get Amazonite. Um, Victoria is saying, yeah. That's the Amazonite one. So that's the sea for me color. I love it. Very, very summery color. Uh, Sue's saying she, she can't do anything in the car as well. Right, that's it for me today for my lovelies. I'll be back on Wednesday. And if you give me just one sec, then I can show you actually what we're going to be doing on Wednesday because I got them in the tray. So I have this sort of going on the curling ski scheme theme theme. Yeah, curling theme. And um I wanted to do earrings but I wanted to do them different. I really wanted them and I'm gonna come back to the main one. I really wanted them to make them look like a bunch of grapes. And I think I succeeded. I got again. You're gonna have a few colorways. You, you have to bear with me. <laughs> you know me. So we're gonna do. It's gonna be a completely different technique, but we're gonna use hat beans. We're gonna use these pearls. They're not round. They 
like an oval shape, I guess, like a rice shape, but like a fat rice shape. So they're going to use, and they're going to use the gorgeous crystals. That's that's a small one. There's a couple, there's different sizes you can do on this one. And those of you who were at the open day on Saturday, let me just show you these two. Those of you who were on the open day on Saturday, you've seen me making them. I just sat there and making them. So you could do all sorts of different variations of this one. And I come up with quite a few colorways. So um, I've loved, I love making these ones. So I would just sit there, make the loops on the top of the earrings and then add them together. And they are so, they're so fun to wear as well. And I'm, I call them last of the summer wine <laughs> because I'm going to pop these in. And actually these would go nicely in my top. There we go. Oh, lovely. I love a little bit of a dangly earring. So we're going to be making this on Wednesday. The really, really easy technique. And not, we're not just going to be doing this. We're going to be, this is like, it will be a whole earring kit. So this is the, but you can do all sorts. So what you're going to have in your, I don't want to sort of go on and give loads away. Um, but um, we're going to be doing more than one earring spare kit. And we're going to look at all sorts of different variations. Some of them will be smaller. Some of them will be bigger. They're going to be a bit of a chain in there involved. All sorts of different. Sometimes, you know, one of less. You just want to do a little bit of it. And where is the other one? This one I quite like. The ones which I did a little bunch on the end of there as well. Quite long again. But in the summer, I love long earrings. Long dangled earrings. So we're going to have so much fun um, on Wednesday with these earrings. And again, we're going along with the look. So quite very well those earrings although it's a different technique and you're using different beads they will match the necklace and they will they will go perfectly with your necklace and i'm going to put this one back on because i got this pink top on so it will go perfectly with it and it's got a little leaf on as well so so that's what we're doing on wednesday and then um don't forget this week we got creation station as well on saturday night we're going back for another one and I put the pendant here, what we made in the last creation station. The kits are, uh, the bundles, well, they're not kits because they don't come in the instructions. The instruction is the creation station. We're making it together. We made this, and one of the ladies called it as a Ferris wheel pendant, which I'm, I'm, I'm going to steal and I'm going to use it. And the only, there was two colorways on the website. So this one is the sky, and I haven't even touched any beads in the earth colorway. So I'm going to do, a, gonna do another creation station on the earth earth colorway that will be this saturday at 7 p.m so do tune in on for that one as well and if you haven't had or haven't got your creation station pack then do go onto the website and grab one of those i think they are still on offer but i think the offer finishes for that one this week so they usually they, they would be 30 pounds but simon put them down to 19.99 so that's that's a really great um and lucy just popped the link up that's a really great um discount on there also on today's ones you have got 10 percent until the end of the week on on the necklaces it's like you know how we do with our kids it's, it's just the price of the beads we don't really put anything else on the top of it so you get 10 percent of the beads and you get the instructions as well if you buy the kit the written instructions right my lovelies everybody have a beautiful day and i will see you very very soon i'll be back on wednesday and um just gonna be having more fun more more more, more beady fun bye everybody bye